So let's bring in our panel to discuss this all. CNN senior political analyst David Gergen, CNN senior political commentator David Axelrod, and longtime White House correspondent for ABC News, my former colleague, my dear friend, Ann Compton. Thanks so much, all of you, for being here. Um, Ax, let me start with you. As you heard Sarah report in her piece, NBC News and The Wall Street Journal released the first post-Trump tape poll of likely voters. Hillary Clinton, 46 percent. Donald Trump, 35 percent. Johnson, 9. Stein, 2. Um, do you believe this poll to be an accurate reflection of how badly this tape hurts, has hurt Donald Trump? Well, yes, it's a, it's a, it's certainly a snapshot at the trough of what, uh, of, of that controversy. But even if he improves, no one has ever recovered uh, that I can think of from an 11-point deficit uh, 30, 29 days uh, before an election. And just to put this in perspective, no one's won by double digits, uh, I think, since uh, Ronald Reagan in, in 1984. I mean, and this is in a four-way that she's up by 11. In the two-way, she's up by 14 in this poll. What's alarming to congressional Republicans is that the, uh, the preference for Democrats on the congressional vote jumped from 3 percent to 7 percent, which is a really, really concerning number for them. So. Uh, that's why you saw Paul Ryan stepping out as he did today, basically saying to his uh, caucus, every man and woman for themselves here. And the poll shows Trump dragging down Republicans across the country. 49 percent of likely voters saying they now want Democrats in power on Capitol Hill. The top strategist for Governor John Kasich fears this scenario. John Weaver tweeted, thanks to Trump and his fellow travelers, Hillary Clinton will win in a landslide with both houses controlled by Dems. Congratulations, Steve, Kellyanne, Jason Miller. Do you think that the Republicans are actually going to lose the House and Senate because of Donald Trump? Is that, is that a, a truly possible scenario here? In there, this year isn't anything absolutely impossible. And imagine what does Donald Trump do from this day forward. He's still got another debate next week. And you've seen him before. When he is attacked, he attacks back even harder. And even that, that line last night, night to Mrs. Clinton about you'd be in jail, that's a strong echo from his convention where the, the shouts of lock her up ringed, uh, just resonated through the convention hall. Uh, he's still got some fight left in him. But I I don't think he's looking at down about down the ticket either. And and uh, and uh, David, a, a moment from last night getting a lot of attention as, as Ann just referenced Trump promising to appoint a special prosecutor to go after Hillary Clinton. Uh, take a listen. I didn't think I'd say this, but I'm going to say it, and I hate to say it, but if I win, I am going to instruct my attorney general to get a special prosecutor to look into your situation, because there has never been so many lies, so much deception. There has never been anything like it. And we're going to have a special prosecutor. David, I don't need to remind you, when Richard Nixon tried to commandeer the Justice Department by, by forcing his attorney general to, to fire a special prosecutor, two, two individuals resigned. The conventional wisdom says that, that Trump saying this out loud is unconscionable, but Frank Luntz's focus group last night thought that it was the best moment of Trump's debate, for Trump in the debate. Uh, and it, it, it worked well among, in the uh, independent voters uh, with CNN as well. So it is distressing, but, but Jake, under the law, the president can request, but he cannot command the Justice Department to appoint a special prosecutor. That's an aftermath of, of the Nixon scandals. And, and, you know, the anchors had to be put around and checks had to be put around the president of the United States. So for him to go there in and of itself was thoughtless. He hadn't really prepared himself. He never spent a half an hour studying to figure out what the, uh, the powers of the presidency are. But beyond that, the very idea of going on a presidential debate and saying, you, you know, if I were president, you'd be in jail, and I'm going to appoint a special prosecutor if I win, I think is so far beyond the bounds of American politics, traditional American politics. It's way outside the mainstream, and it, it, it really, that's the language of a ten-pot dictator. Uh, and it's trying to su trying to suppress the opposition. We see that in other countries, but we never imagined we'd see it in the United States. And I think that's one of the reasons that so many people today are embarrassed about this debate, that it went so low and it, and it just felt like so much mudslinging. I'm not sure Americans really want a third debate. 
Axe, uh, Steve Schmidt, a Republican strategist, one of the top strategists for John McCain in 2008, said of the Republican Party, quote, the Republican Party will look like Berlin circa 1945. The wreckage will take a substantial amount of time to pick up. There will be a restoration, but it's going to require a monumental feat of leadership by someone who has not yet revealed themselves to the American people. Do you think that, that even if Trump loses, that it's really going to be that cata cataclysmic for the Republican Party? Well, obviously, if these kind of numbers hold up and they lose the, uh, the, the Senate, I, I honestly think it's going to be hard for them to lose the House just because there aren't that many competitive uh, races and Democrats need to pick up 30 seats. Could happen, uh, but more likely you'll have a much narrower House and, ironically, a much more reactionary caucus because the uh, Republicans who are likely to lose are, are moderate Republicans who are in swing districts. But I think uh, the Republican Party has a tremendously difficult situation here because you have uh, a conservative faction and a center-right faction, neither of whom claim Trump, uh, and are both going to blame each other for this. And then you have this rabid Trump faction. And anybody who thinks that Donald Trump is going to, uh, on election night, uh, read the results, uh, bid farewell to the American public, and go back to business and not uh, enter in this debate any longer, uh, hasn't been studying the man. I think that the Republican Party is in for a rough, a rough road here. And uh, Donald Trump last night said that uh, every billionaire uses the same provision in the tax code that uh, allows the, the super rich to avoid paying federal income taxes. He mentioned Warren Buffett, who is a Clinton supporter. Um, Warren Buffett today said Trump takes advantage of this, and he does not. He writes, quote, I have paid federal income tax every year since 1944 when I was 13. Uh, though being a slow starter, I owed only $7 in tax that year. I have copies of all 72 of my returns, and none uses a carry forward. I guess the big question, Ann, is does it even matter anymore? Do the, I mean, Donald Trump says whatever he wants to say, and Warren Buffett is disputing the facts. Does that matter? Well, probably not to those who are going to the polls. There may be a lot of people on Wall Street or maybe even future presidential contenders who are now going to look back at their own returns. But, the, but there's no question that the Republican Party is already feeling crippled, and they're going to have to contend with millions of Americans who vote for Donald Trump. And where do they go after November? That's the big question.